So good afternoon once again. Today we will be talking about, I was starting with basically geometric progression. In the last session, I just started the geometric progression, what I remember. Is the screen is visible to you all? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Now today, as I said, I will be talking continuing further from a series and complex number. So I will be starting with geometric progression. Geometric in geometric progression, what happens? First area term is A, identified as A or marked as A. And uh, in geometric progression, common ratio terminology is used and that is fixed throughout the series. Now question comes what is what what we is meant by common ratio. Common ratio is basically division of first term by second term and third term by second term. That will be same throughout the series. In general form, how do we write geometric progression? As you can see, it is written over there, A, A, R, A, R square, A, R cube, and so on. Now, again, two formulas have to be remembered. That is, um, uh, that is related to terms. And the second one will be related to sum. And there will be another formula that will be sum to infinity. So the first formula is how to find out the nth term. We can write it as dn or an is equal to a raised to the power r raised to the power n minus 1. Now, how to find the ratio of two terms? You can see your geometric progression is A, A, R. That means the ratio. The first term, uh, the uh, nth term will be a r raised to the power n minus 1, and we are talking about the second term that is a m. So, in that case, what will happen? a r raised to the power n minus 1. a and a will get cancelled. We will be remaining with R raised to the power n minus 1 since base is same and it is in division. So denominator will be subtracted. And once the denominator is subtracted, so no doubt it will come in the power. You will be only left with R raised to the power n minus n. So that is for the ratio of two terms. Now comes the problem. You have to find R and the next four terms of the GP. Your GP is minus 3, 1, minus 1 by 3, 1 by 9. Your first term will be, as usual, will be minus 3. Now just tell me, what will be the common ratio in this problem? Minus 1 by Anyone? 3. Okay, thank you. Now the next four terms, for, uh, we have to find the next four terms. Four terms are given to us. That means our answer will start from A5 or T5. A5 or T5 will be equal to A4 into R. A4 is 1 by 9 and your R is minus 1 by 3. Get it multiplied, it will be minus 1 by 27. And similarly, you have to multiply 
by minus 1 by 3 simultaneously. Your A6 will be 1 upon 81. A7 will be minus 1 upon 243. And your A8 will be 1 upon 729. Is that clear? This is what I was discussed last time. Yes. Okay. And then we have to just recall also what we did because I will be moving further to it. So we should have a brief, brief background what we did last time. Now we have to determine the 12th term of the GP whose eighth term is 192 and the common ratio is 2. We have to apply the formula what we have just done. A12 given to you. A12 has to be calculated. And you are having A8 with you. So that means A12 upon A8 will be equal to R raised to the power 12 minus 8. 12 minus 8 means 4. Your R is 2. 2 raised to the power 4. You have to calculate A12. A12 will be 2 raised to the power 4 into A8. Your A8 is 192. 2 raised to the power 4 will be 16. That means your A12 will be 3072. That is the 12th term will be A0, uh, 3072 when your common ratio is 2 and the 8th term is 192. Got it? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, Three numbers are in AB and their sum is 15. If 1, 3, 9 be added to them respectively, they are in GP. Find the numbers. So first of all, what, what, what thing will come to our mind? They have given in the initial part of the question that the sum is related to AP. If they are talking about AP, that means we have to just recall what are the three numbers in AP. A minus B, A, A plus B. This is used when the sum is given to us. So straight away, we will add these numbers. And this addition will be equal to 50. B will get cancelled, you will be left with 3A is equal to 15. That means A is equal to 5. Okay. Now, going back to the problem, to the second part of the problem. If 1, 3, 9 are added to that, to what? The point of confusion is to what? To that terms in AP. They are in GP. <coughs> so what will happen to the numbers in the AP? You have to add 1, 3 and 9 simultaneously to these numbers. That means now your number will be A minus D plus 1, A plus 3 and A plus, A plus D plus 9. These are the numbers which are in GP. Now for GP, what is the condition? Second term divided by first term is equal to third term divided by second term. This is what is written over here. Is that clear? Now, what we will be doing? We, we, we have to, we know A. A is 5. Reduce this problem. Cross multiply them. Or you can do one thing. You can add the value of A here. That is why 
I have done in the next step. You can do it over here. That doesn't make any difference. That means a plus three whole square cross multiply it, and uh, on the right hand side of the equal to sign, it will be a minus d plus one into a plus d plus nine. Fine. Now we have now start writing the values of a. That will be five plus three whole square is equal to five minus d plus one. And five plus d plus nine. So you will get eight whole square equal to six minus d into fourteen plus d. Correct. Multiply it. You will get a quadratic equation. Bring everything on the one side. Is making d square as positive. That means you will be moving from right to left. As you will be moving to right, right to left. So d uh, minus d square will be plus d square minus a d will become plus a d, and you have to now subtract sixty four minus eighty four. That will be minus equal to zero. Now this is a quadratic equation. You have to find the values. Now for finding up the values, there are two methods. First method is breaking of the Splitting of the middle term, or the second one is the formula what I told you in the last class. Now it's simple. Numbers are smaller one, so one will be multiplied by twenty. You will get twenty. Now you have to split the factors of twenty in such a way that either by addition or by subtraction you get eight. So ten into two is twenty. If I'm subtracting two from ten. I'm going to get eight. So that means that is what I will be following. That means your equation d square plus eight d minus twenty will be split it up as d square plus ten d minus two d minus twenty. Eight d common, it will be d plus ten minus two common. In the second bracket, you will get d plus ten. Take d plus ten as the first vector. First, you will be left with d minus two. Now see, you are going to get two values of d. That is minus ten and two. Place that here in this part. You have the value of a. Now you are having the value of d. When you are having value of d as minus ten, your numbers will be fifteen, five, and minus five. And when you will be having d as two, your numbers will be three, five, and seven. That means there are two equals of for the same condition. Is that clear now? The question was related to a condition that there are three numbers, and the sum was given to us. Later in the second part, they said that if some particular number is being added, these numbers then change into G. That your question was to determine the series. We started with A P, found the value of A. Then in the second part, we added those numbers to the numbers which were originally in A P. After that, we got three numbers. Now these three numbers, after the addition, were in G P. And for G P, second term divided by first term is equal to third term divided by second term. This is what you can see at the left corner of your screen. After that, simplification is there. After simplification, you will find two values of d: minus ten and two. Then you have to find the values of the series numbers. 
After that, it came when you kept d equal to minus 10. It was 15, 5, and minus 5. And uh, when you kept d equal to 2, you got 3, 5, 7. Now you can that your answer is correct. Is that clear? Now, moving further, we will be talking about sum. Now, here you have to remember one thing. The formula for sum changes, and this change is basically dependent on the value of the common way. Normally, what happens, your series will be a summation of a plus ar plus ar square till ar n. Now, you can see there are two formulas written as sun is equal to a to 1 minus r is to the power n upon 1 minus r minus that is applicable when r is greater than 1. Now, these two formulas are there. Now we'll see how they are applied. How many terms of the GB? Root 3, 3, 3 root 3. Add up to 39 plus 13 root 3. That means what is given to you? A GB is given, that GB is root 3, 3, 3 root 3. And sum as I just gave it to you, as 39 plus 30 root 3. Now the question arises, what is A? A is root 3. Anyone of you who can let me know what is R in this question? Uh, this is, sir, 3 by uh, 3 root. But um, we will multiply uh, 3 root by 3 root in the um, question and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll find 3 by uh, 3 root. No, that is fine. Actually, in mathematics simplification, we don't keep under root in the denominator. You can see that I've written r is equal to 3 by root 3 and equal to root 3. Now question arises how it came. We normally do rationalization. We multiply and divide by root 3. Because root 3 into root 3 is 3. When you will be dividing and multiplying 3 by root 3 by root 3, you will be getting root 3 only. Because root 3 into root 3 is 3. Now, since r is greater than 1, the value of root 3 is 1.717. It is greater than 1, so we will be using the formula, second formula. Now, we are having the sum. Sn is equal to 39 plus 13 root 3. Your a is root 3. Your r is root 3. And the value of n is not known. What is has to be found. So we will be having root uh, n in a single place. You can see in the numerator. Root 3 raised to the power n minus 1. Now how to calculate the value of n? This is the question. We will be cross multiplying it. 
This is what we were having. Cross multiply it. 39 plus 13 root 3 into root 3 minus 1 is equal to your numerator. That is root 3 into root 3 n minus 1. I have multiplied the brackets first. I have taken 13 common because 13 C is 39. Take 13 common, you will be left with 3 plus root 3 into root 3 minus 1. Don't touch the right hand side. Simplify left hand side as much as you can. You can see that after multiplying the brackets, you are left only with 2 root 3. The 2 root 3 into 13 will be 26 root 3. Remove root 3 from both the sides. Now you are left with 26 is equal to under root 3 and minus 1. Bring that minus 1 to the left hand side. That will become 27 is equal to root 3 power 10. Split 27 in terms of 3. That means 3 raised to the power 3 is 27. Is equal to 3 raised to the power n by 2. Bases are same, powers will be same. So that means 3 is equal to n by 2, n by 2 is n is equal to 6. This is somewhat, somewhat complicated, but please try to understand. See what I have done. And how it is done. And secondly, you should be aware why it is done. If you have any doubt, just let me know. I will re-explain it. Because something, this is required. And if you are in a position to understand it, that you can solve it. If you are afraid of it, there is no solution for it. Just let me know whether you have understood how this has been solved. Is that clear? Have you understood it? Now, see to the problem. You have to find the sum to n terms of the series 9 plus 99 plus 999. Till now, you have seen that there was no plus sign or minus sign in between the numbers. Now you are having a plus sign between the numbers. That means this is a problem related to series. First of all, what we are supposed to do, whatever we have studied till now, we have not seen a plus sign between it. Okay, fine. If it is a plus sign in between them also, doesn't make any difference. Can anyone tell me, is this series uh, AP or a GP? Is this arithmetic progression or arithmetic progression? Any idea from anyone who can let me know? Is this an arithmetic progression or arithmetic progression? Because these two words you have heard till now. So 
Doctor, I think this is not AP and GP because when we uh, divide 99 by 29, it will become 11. And uh, when we uh, uh, subscribe 99 minus 9, it will become 19. And this is not AP and GP. No, you uh, you told me partially correct and partially wrong in uh, AP. Now listen to it all. All listen to it very carefully. What happens when in an AP second term minus first term should be or is equal to third term minus second term? In this, your first term is A and your common difference is ninety. Okay, 99 minus 90, 99 and 99 minus 9 is 90, but 999 minus 99 is 900. This is not an A. No. Secondly, when you are dividing 99 by 9, you get 11. But when you are dividing 999 by 99, you are not going to get 11. That means this is the answer justification that this is neither an AP nor a G. Now what I will do? I will convert this 9, 99, 999 in such a form that it is converted into either a GP or an AP. In mostly maximum cases, it is, it is converted into GP. Now the question arises out. 9 can be written as 10 minus 1. 99 can be written as 100 minus 1. And 999 can be written as 100 minus 9, minus 1. Okay. Now you can see over here what I have, how I have written. I have written like this. I have replaced 9 by 10 minus 1. 99 by 10 square minus 1. 999 as 10 square, 10 cube minus 1. And the last term, 10 to the power n minus. What I'm doing? If you open this, remove this bracket, what will you get? 10 plus 10 square plus 10 cube plus dot 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 till 10 to the power n minus 1. Minus 1 will be for the 10 times. That means this 1 will, will be replaced by 10. Okay. Now, in the first part, what you can see? Your, this is a case of GP. Now, question arises out. Your first term is 10. Your second term is 100 by 10. That is 10. And your third term is 1000 by 100. That is again 10. That means this is a case of GP now. Your R is greater than 1, so that means you have to use the formula of Rn minus 1 upon R minus 1. Substitute the formula, your A is 10, 10 into 10n minus 1 upon 10 minus 1 minus 10. Don't forget that 10. Simplify it, you will get this answer. Now the question arises, whether we have calculated this correctly or not, can any one of you can let me know, is this answer a correct answer or not? This is correct, sir. How come? Uh, because, uh, teacher, you uh, make this uh, into a GP and minus 9 and minus N. And in the end, we uh, just write the formula and minus N. Okay. 
and the pin. Mm, I didn't get you what you mean to say. I'm just asking. You have solved this problem. Now you have to see whether you have done it correctly or not. What will you do? Uh, sir, can we uh, can we add one n to n? Uh, for example, uh, for a one, we will add a one, and we will get nine. Then ninety-nine into. Uh, how 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 you you are going to get? My question is that only. I just asked. Can you show me by placing n is uh, this? Anyway, can you show me? that this formula is correct for this theory. My question is that. Uh, sir, mm -hmm. this formula is correct for this uh, question. How come? Uh, because minus n is in the end, and it remains by, uh, by its way, but the uh, first uh, term, which uh, no, we make the Sn, Sn equal with 10, uh, multiplied with 10 uh, n minus 1 and divided into 10 minus 1. Uh, this is the formula of Sn uh, to GP, uh, GP sequences, because in here we have uh, A1. A1 is the first term and it's 10. And also the R, uh, comma ratio is also 10. Um, so uh, the, this formula is uh, surely cor uh, correct for this equation. Anyone else? Can anyone else can prove that? Whatever we have written, Sn is equal to 10 into 10 to the power n minus 1 upon 9 minus n is correct for this series. Or otherwise, I will let you know how that is. That is what I want. I will prove it that this is correct. We have a general term like this, okay? Just replace n by 1, here and here. See what will happen, 10 into 10, 1, minus 9. 10 raised to the power 1 is 10, 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 divided by 9 cancel. You have 10 over here, minus 1, that is 9. This is 9. Okay, you say that we are not still satisfied what you prove. Okay, replace this n by 2. This and this. And then find it out how you, what you got. Whether you got 99 or not. 99 plus 1. What you got? After placing 2 here, here and here, what you got? Just let me know what you got. I will tell you what you are going to get. Uh, we will get the sequence of this question. Ah, I just want the answer. I don't want the sequence. I just want the answer. After placing this two over here and here, what will you get after solving this? Uh, sir, we will get the terms of the question. Uh, the first term is nine. Uh, when we replace the 1 into uh, the um, place of the n and also the 99 till the end of this. How you are going to get 99? Uh, when we replace the 2 uh, no, inside no, of the uh, n. Just, 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 just a minute. You just replace this, this, this. I'm just pointing it over here. This yes, n by 2 and this n by 2. And just let me know what you got after solving this. Uh, the answer will be 99. How come? Uh, uh, the first term 10 is multiplied with uh, 99. And when we want to uh, divide the 99 by 9, it will be uh, 11 
and uh, when we multiply 10 by 11, it will be uh, 110. And you have to subtract n, n minus 2. You have replaced n by 2. So you will get 108. How you are going to get 99? You are getting 108. See to it. After simplification, what you got? You got 99 or you got 108? 108, sir. 108, that is what I mean to say. When you are going to add these two numbers, you see a sign, plus sign is there. You are adding up. So then it will be 108. Got it? Yes, sir. So this formula is correct. This is what we have done. Uh, when we replace the two uh, inside of the N, uh, it will be the sum of uh, first two terms, 99 and 9, and it will be 108. Yes. After the class, replace this N by 3, and this by 3. You will get the sum of three numbers. Yes, sir. Three terms. Yes, sir. But this is not the formula of A and this is the formula of S N, and uh, we can uh, we can uh, find S three. If we want to find the S three, uh, we will get uh, one hundred one thousand one hundred and seven, uh, and this is true. This formula is true. That is what I said. don't get confused by so many things. Just try to understand. A problem was given to us that was 9 plus 99 plus 999. And the question was to find the sum of n terms. That means our answer will be in n. This is what we have done. What I was trying to let you know, I was just making you a little bit smarter. How come? Whatever you have found is correct or not. I was just letting you know if whatever you have derived or whatever you have calculated is absolutely correct. This whatever we have calculated 10 into 10 to the power n minus 1 upon 9 minus n is applicable for this problem only. A n is something yes, different, S n is something different. This formula, what you have derived, is for this particular problem. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Now, three terms in G P. We have seen three terms in A P. Now you see three terms in G P. These are the standard, we cannot change it. Because here, what is going to happen? Product will be given. There, the sum was given. Here, the product was will be given. A upon R into A into AR. Now, the question arises, why we are using it? I said the product will be given. Then you will be multiplying these three numbers. You will be left with A cube only. Correct? Now, come to the problem. Now here what it says, the sum of three numbers in GP is 38 and their product is 1728, correct? Let the three numbers be A by R, A, A, R. According to the problem or according to the question, when the sum, we are talking about the sum, it will be written as A by R plus A plus A, R is equal to 38 because that is the sum. And when we are talking about the product, it will be A R, A by R into A into A R. You will get cancelled R. Only you will be left with A cube equal to 1728. Now you have to split 1728 in terms of that number, where you get a power, which so is basically 12 raised to the power 3. Bases are different, powers are same, 
that means A will be 12. Now, replace this A by 12 in the first equation. The first equation is A by R plus A plus AR equal to 38. Replace A by 12. You are going to get 12 by R plus 12 plus 12 R. Now you have to simplify it. There are different methods of simplifying it, but I have taken the shortest route. You are having a quadratic equation 12 r square plus 26 r plus 12 equal to 0. I can see that uh, there is something common between 12 and 26. So I have taken four common. I have taken basically two common. So it will be, you will be left with 6 r square minus 13 r plus 6 equal to 0. Again, a quadratic equation. Multiply 6 and 6, you will get 36. Split 36 in such a manner that you get 13, either by adding those numbers or by subtracting them. So what I will be using? I will be using 9 and 4. 9 4 for 36. And when I will be adding them, I will be getting 13. Since minus 13 is required, so I will be doing, I will, I will be splitting minus 13 r as minus 9 r minus 4 r because when i will be adding them i will be getting minus 13 r you can see it is written over there now i'm taking three common from the first two numbers and r common so i will be getting 3 r into 2 r minus 3 minus again the same thing because the second bracket has to be the same one so I will be taking 2 common, so I will be left with 2r minus 3. Taking 2r minus 3 as common, your second bracket will be 3r minus 2. Okay, r is equal to 2 by 3 and r is equal to 3 by 3. Again, you can see that you are getting two values of r, 3 by 2 and 2. When A is 12 and R is 2 by 3, your series is 18, 12 and 8. But when you are taking A as 12 and R is equal to 3 by 2, you can see that you are getting 8, 12 and 18. Only reversal. That's it. Now, I don't know whether I've done it correctly or not. Go back to the problem and check it. We have 18, 12 and 8. But we have 18, 12 and 8. Place it in any of the equation. 18, 12 and 8. R is 8 is 12 and R is 2 by 3. If you are taking R is 2 by 3 and A12. See to it, your first condition is correct or wrong. I'm just telling you, you can check it whether you have done it correctly or not. Uh, the first uh, term will be 18. 18? Yes, sir. The first term is 18. The second one is 12, and the third is 8. So that means when you are clubbing these three numbers, you are getting 38. Uh, by uh, the addition, uh, it will be 38. And the multiplying will, uh, will be and... Uh, 17 and 28. 17 and... and so that is what? I'm just letting you know. Whatever you have done, whatever you have calculated, you can check it yourself, that you have done it correctly. Okay, my purpose was that, to let you know, you should check it whether you have done it correctly or not. This is the simple, I'm not going, asking you to do something new. Whatever you have done, write it back to the problem. You can see over there, what you have calculated. 
ओके सम टू इंफिनिटी द थर्ड फॉर्मूला फॉर द सन दैट मींस द सीरीज इज नॉट गोइंग टू एंड कंटिन्यू टू वी हैव अ वेरी सिंपल फॉर्मूला एक्स इंफिनिटी इज इक्वल टू ए अपॉन वन माइनस आर दैट्स इट You can see that the question is find the sum of the series infinite dp one comma minus one by three comma one by nine comma minus one by twenty seven. First of all, check it whether this is an AP or uh, AP dp what it is. Your series is one comma minus one by three comma one by nine comma minus one by twenty seven. Just see to it whether it is an AP or a dp. What it is? It's a GP, sir. GP. GP. So then, what is the formula for GP? What is the formula for the infinity or a GP series? Formula is written over there at the top in the right. S infinity is equal to a by one minus r. Your a is what? What is the value of a? Uh, a is one. And what is R? Uh, R is uh, minus one by G. Okay, that means S infinity will be equal to one upon one minus minus of one by three. That will be three by four. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. See to the next problem. The common ratio of GP is minus four by five. That means your R is equal to minus four by five, and the sum to infinity is eighty by nine. यानि कि S infinity is eighty by nine. You are being asked to calculate the first term of the GP. Now you are having R with you. You are having S infinity with you. And you are being asked to calculate a. Okay, fine, no problem. We have s infinity is equal to a upon one minus r. S infinity is eighty by nine. A is not known. R is known. So what we will be doing? We will be applying into the formula a upon one minus minus four by five equal to eighty by nine. After simplification, you will get. A is equal to sixty. See to it whether you are going to get a by sixty. A is equal to sixteen or not? Uh, yes, sir. It will be sixteen. Only okay, what are? Other learners doing? They are not responding, or they are not able to understand what I am teaching. Only ladies are repl replying. They are sleeping. Are ah, oh, what are I don't know? What are gentlemen doing? Now comes arithmetic geometric progression. What we call it as AG. Now the thing is that you might be worried. What actually APGP? Okay. Uh, two things coming together. A sequence is said to be arithmetic geometric sequence if the nth term of the sequence is obtained by Multiplying the nth term of AP and GP. See to it what I am telling you. What is AGP? AGP is a geometric sequence. If the nth term of the sequence is obtained by multiplying the nth term of AP and a GP, that means it will be in that form. Now we will see how this is calculated. Basically, we can see that to make it 
uh, in a understandable mode. We have, we can say that ATP is given by AB into A plus D BR, comma A plus 2 D BR square. So, what will be the nth term? This is a standard relation for the nth term. It is equal to A plus n minus 1 bar B R raised to the power n minus 1. And for infinity, if n tends to infinity, this will be the formula. S is equal to A B upon 1 plus R plus B D R upon 1 minus R square. Now the thing is that how it is. You have to simply remember the relation. You will see. Now here, what happens? As infinity, I told you there will be two formulas, r greater than 1, r less than 1. If n tends to infinity, some of the infinite ADP will be this, AB upon 1 minus r plus BDR upon 1 minus r square. We'll see how it will You have to sum the infinite number of uh, the terms ADP. Your series is 3 plus 5 into 1 by 4 plus 7 into 1 by 4 square plus 9 into 1 by 4 square. Now the question arises, how will you come to know that whether this is an AGP or not? If it is not written that you have to find the sum to infinity of AGP. If this only part is given to you, what will you do? I told you that ADP is nothing, but it is a series of, uh, in which the product of, it is basically a sum of product of F and AT and a GP. If you see to this problem, your A, there are two series in it. Which are those series? 1, 5, 7, 9. Common difference is two throughout the series. And another series is one by four, one by four square, one by four cube. Is that clear? You can see to it. There are two series in it. I'm just letting you know how you will come to know that this is an ATP. Forget if this is not written. First case is it's written over there. So it's understood that it's an ADP. Now, if this is not written over there, what will you do? After having a look at the series, you will see that there are two series. That is, this is a product of something. But second thing is that. You can see that there are two things which are being product. In, uh, they are being multiplied. The first is 3, 5, 7, 9. These are all the form of odd number starting from 3. And in the second part, you can see that, that uh, there is 1 by 4, 1 by 4 square, 1 by 4 cube. That means that is the cube. Now, going back to the relation, A is 3, you can see to it. Your D is common difference is 2, B is 1, R is equal to 1 by 4. You have to sum that, sum to infinity. So your S is equal to A upon 1 minus R plus PR upon 1 minus R square. You are having each and every value with you. Just evaluate it. Now the evaluation part has to be done by you. Replacing A as 3, R as 1 by 4, D as 2, that's it. After simplification, you will get 14, 4 by 9.
Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now comes harmonic mean. Harmonic progression. Harmonic progression is the secret A, A2, A3 of non zero numbers. If 1 upon A1, 1 upon A2, 1 upon A3 forms an A3. Now you can see, I'm um, just moving forward to the problem that is, you have to find the tenth term of the HP. Well, HP is 1 upon 3, 1 upon 7, 1 upon 11, 1 upon 15. If you see to the denominator of these series, what will you see? 3, 7, 11, 15. They have one thing in common. That is the common difference. You will say how? 7 minus 3 is 4. 11 minus 7 is 4. 15 minus 11 is 4. That means this is a K harmonic product. You, you have to find T10. There is no formula as such for T10 in harmonic mean. Straight away, what we will be doing? We will be using the uh, formula of AP. That is Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1 into D. That is the relation. You have to find 10. That means replace N by 10. A is 3. D is 4, replace it, you will get 39. You was asked to calculate the 10th term of the HP. That will be 1 upon 39. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Reciprocal, reciprocal of AP. Now, sum of first n natural numbers, their squares and cubes. If we are adding, now be careful what I'm going to ask you. I want reply from gentlemen now. You can see that there are three series written in n. The first one is 1, 2, and till n is equal to n by 2 into n plus 1. This says, if you add n natural numbers, you will get the sum as n by 2 into n plus 1. If you square those numbers and add them. You will get n by 6 into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1. Third case, if you cube those numbers and then add, you will get 1 by 4 n square into n plus 1 whole square. Now, I request just show me that this formula is correct. These three formulas are correct. If I take two terms at a time, initial two terms at a time, just let me know whether this is correct or not. Your SN was n first n natural numbers is n by 2 into n plus 1. Sn for the squares of the first n natural numbers is n by 6 into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1. And the sum of cubes of numbers is 1 by 4 n square into n plus 1 whole square. Any one of you, one, you can show that this these relations are correct. Sir, 
sir, these are questions. I would have, I would have asked you these questions to prove it by mathematical induction concept. You can prove these problems with the, that concept also. That these are absolutely uh, correct questions. Uh, yes, sir. In the mathematical uh, induction, uh, we have to replace the n by one at the first step, <coughs> and the right. second step uh, we will uh, will replace the n uh, by k. Thank you. What will be the third step? Uh, the first term, uh, when we replace the n by one, it will be one by two n two. Uh, two, the two, uh, two and two uh, will be. Uh... No, 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 madam, madam, madam. I, I just said, uh, this can also be proved by mathematical induction. We are not proving this by mathematical induction right now, but I am happy that you know what mathematical induction is and how the problem in mathematical induction are solved. That's great. But my question was here that anyone who can show me, prove it, that the formulas what are written in front of you is absolutely correct if n is taken as 2. How will you prove that? That is the question. Sir, these are correct uh, because they are uh, AP 1 plus 2 1 plus 3 plus 4 plus uh, 5, they are AP. And we have a formula for SN. The formula is n by 2 uh, multiplied by 2a plus uh, plus 9 minus 1 uh, multiplied with d. And uh, for every one, we can uh, get these formulas. And also, we can uh, show if we uh, find S3 and every one, we, um, uh, we can solve them. So. Okay, now I will tell you what I was asking. It's correct? What I was asking. If you take the formula number one, I said n is equal to two. Don't worry. Replace n by two. N with two in right hand side of the equation one. Just let me know what you are going to get. If you are replacing n by two. Here, in this part, if you are replacing n by 2, what, what you are going to get? Uh, sir, it will be 3. It will be 3. What is the sum of these two numbers? Yes. This is what I was asking. The sum of first two terms, it will be 3 also. Now, replace n by 2 here. See. Tell me what you are going to get. Replace n by 2. n by 2? Yeah. n is equal to 2. It will become 5, sir. 5? Okay. What is this? Summation of these two numbers is 5. Also fine. 5. It will be also 5. This is what I am proving it. Okay. Fine. Now, moving further. If this, these are the, this is what you have to remember. These sigma. terms are in terms of no sigma. Because we will be, I will be using it just right now. Summation k is equal to n by 2 into n plus 1. Summation k square is equal to n by 6 into 2 n, uh, into n plus 1 into 2 n plus. Oh, I forgot it n by 6 into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1. And summation kq is equal to 1 by 4 n square into n plus 1 whole square. Now the question arises, how to use them? Use them. Now see what are the different steps to be followed. Find the sum of the following series. The series is 1 square plus 3 square plus 5 square is equal till minus term is 2 and minus 1 whole square. This I'm telling you what you are supposed to do. You have to find the sum. 
So let us write that the Rs term is given by Tr is equal to, it is given by 2 R minus 1 whole square. Open it up. A minus B whole square is A square minus 2 AB plus B square. You will get 4 R square minus 4 R plus 1. You were asked to find the sum. So see to it on the left hand side. That will be summation TR from K equal to 1 to N will be equal to summation of the complete series. That is 4R square minus 4R plus 1. In the next step, what will you do? You will take 4 away and you will come write this like this. You have written this like this. Take 4 out, write in terms of R square. Minus 4, minus 4 out, you are left with R, summation in this way. This is plus. Okay. Plus 1, the plus 1 will be N. Okay. This one will be N. Now see, summation of R square is N upon 6 into N plus 1 into 2N plus 1. Summation of R is n by 2 into n plus 1. And summation of 1 will be n only. Okay. Now, placing them together. In the first and second term, you were having 4. 4 bracket n by 6 into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 bracket close minus 4. Summation into n by 2 into n plus 1 bracket close plus n. That is what? 1. 1 being added n times. 1 into n will be n. Simplify it, you will get 2 by 3 n into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 minus 2 n into n plus 1 plus n. What you can do? You can do one thing. You take 1 by 3 n common. n is here, n is here, and n is here. Take this common and you have 3. So when you will be taking 1 by 3 common, so in this first bracket, you will be left with 2 into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1. <coughs> in the second, it will be minus, this is 2, you have taken that 3, 2 into 3 will be 6 n into n plus 1 plus 3 n. Okay, now Open it up. This is n plus 1 into 2n plus 1. So this will come out to be 2n square plus 2n plus n plus 1 minus, like, multiply this n plus 1 by 6. This will be 6n plus 6 plus 3. And you have taken common. Okay. So you will be left with this part. Simplify whatever is getting cancelled up. Remove it. And you will be left with 1 by 3 into n into 4 is 4n square minus 1. This is the summation of this. 1 square plus 3 square plus 5 square is still 2n minus 1 whole square. Summation is this. The answer will be in terms of Just replace n by 2, n with 2 in this problem and let me know what you are going to get. Here, replace n by 2 in the last step. 2 into 2 is 4. 4 into 4 is 16. 16 minus 1 is 15. And uh, 15 into 2 is 30. And 30 divided by 3 is Okay. Add first two numbers. What you are going to get? Ten. First two numbers. First two numbers of the question. It will be ten. Nine plus. Nine plus that one. Equals ten. That means this solution is absolutely correct. Correct.
I'm showing you the way how you can check whether you have done the solution correctly or not. I'm showing you that way also. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Now you can see there are two, two series moving simultaneously. 1 into 2 square plus 2 into 3 square plus 3 into 4 square. Now you, here, just see the, to the problem that it is written that you have to sum the series up to n terms. But keep one thing in mind that the nth term is not given. That is the difference. Now, keeping an eye on the sequence of the problem, you have to identify n or r, whatever you want. So you can see that first series is 1, 2, 3, that is r. In the second series, you can see that this is 2, 3, 4. That means r plus 1, and there is a square. So that means the nth sum or the rth sum will be n into n plus 1 whole square. Open it up. When you will be opening it up, you will be getting r into r square plus 2r plus 1. Open that bracket, you will get r cube plus 3r square plus r. Your tr is equal to r cube plus 2r square plus r. You have to sum them up. Write summation sign on both, both sides. You will get it as summation k is equal to 1 raised to the power 2 till n as tr equal to summation r cube plus 3r, 2r square plus r. Just expand it. <coughs> r cube double. <coughs> Summation of R cube does not have any coefficient, so leave it. Summation of R square has a coefficient of 2. That means summation will be multiplied by 2. And the third one is summation of R. Okay. Just placing up the values. 1 by 4 n square into n plus 1 whole square plus 2 times of n by 6 into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 plus n by 2 into n plus 1. Okay. Everything is in the same form in the next step. Simplify it. Here it is. How the simplification will be done. In the first line, you see what can be taken as common. In the numerator part, you can see that all the three numbers have n in common and n plus 1 as common. So straight away you can take n into n plus 1 common. Now what about the numbers? You can see that numerator has 1 only and denominator has 4, 3 and 2. So you can take the LCM out common. It will be 12. That means your first three numbers will be n into n plus 1 by 12. You have to keep that thing common from all the numbers. So you will be left with 3n into n plus 1 plus 4 into 2n plus 1 plus 6. Now open up the bracket. Don't touch the first three terms. Open up the bracket. That will be 3n squared plus 3n plus 8n plus 4 plus 6. Add the numbers. You will get 3n squared plus 11n plus 10. 10 and this is again a quantitative equation. So that means 3 to 10 will be 30. You want 11. 11 can come by 9. Uh, 6 and 5. When you are going to add them, you are going to get 11. Okay? That means your equation will be now split it up in the form of 3n square plus 6n plus 5n plus 10. Take 3n common, you will be left with n plus 2 and 5 common n plus 2. 
that will be n into n plus 1 by 12, n plus 2, n plus 3, n plus 5. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. With this, now we start unit two. That is algebra two. Unit 2, Is that clear? Got it? Yes, sir. I was talking about complex numbers. Any number which can be written in the form of A plus I. Listen to it very carefully. I will be taking back to my last session where I told, told you that uh, quadratic equation AX square plus BX plus C can be split up by a formula and by splitting the middle. Now, now the question arises, what will happen if we get a number as minus 4 
in under root. What I am saying? Minus 4 in under root. Earlier, we were saying that we cannot solve it. But now, I will show you how it is solved. How it will be solved. That means, any number which can be written in, in the form of A plus IB is a complex number. Where A is a real part and B is an imaginary. Now, question, how we will get this imaginary part? Straight away, you you can see that i square is equal to minus 1. So i will be equal to under root minus 1. Okay. Now, you can see that under root minus a can be written as iota under root means minus 4 can be written as i is nothing but i is known as iota. What is known as iota? Now there is i from where and how does this iota come? First of all you can see that it is minus 25. Minus 25 can be that this i under root 25, under root of 25 is 5, your answer will be 5. Secondly, under root minus 30. Straight away, take i out, out and uh, remaining the number will be the under root. Minus 125. Minus 125 is there, for minus 1, you have to take i out, out. Under root of 125 is 25 into 5. Under root of 25 is 5. Under root 5 will be less. That will be 5i under root. Now, see to it. Minus 3 under root into minus 3 under root. It will be i under root 3 for the first part and i under root 3 for the second part. Multiply then i square into under root 3 square. i square is what? Minus 1. And root 3 square is? You will be left with minus 3. In the uh, next, uh, next part, you can see that it is under root of minus 98 divided by under root 49. Uh, under root 49. Minus into under root 98 upon 49. Minus 1 is nothing but that is iota. Under root 40. Now, under root 98 divided by 49 is under root 2. Your answer will be i under root 2. I'm just introducing how to you how this iota works. Now we have that same, same thing, nothing to be worried about it. It is, we have to find the value of x. x is equal to under root minus 25. Squaring it you will get this number, under root it, which will be in plus and minus, rest everything will remain the same. Minus 25 can be written as i under root 25, under root 25 is 5, because that is square. Well, you will be getting a solution of plus minus. If you are squaring 5, you are getting 25, and if you are squaring minus 5, Again, you are getting 25. So that means our answer will be plus minus 5 iota. Now, here it is a problem. I switch x square plus 54 equal to c. We move that, move that plus 54 to the right hand side, you will get minus 54. x will be equal to plus minus under root minus 54. Minus under root is iota. Rest everything will be in the under root. That is 54. 54 can be split up, split it up into 9 into 6. That will be plus minus iota. Under root 9 is 3. 
under root 6 will remain as it is. So that will be plus minus 3 iota under root 6. Iota can be written in not after the under root but before under root. Now any one of you can explain me how this has been written. And how this has been written is something different, or why it is written is something different. How and why both have to be answered. Anyone who can answer it, what has been done and why it has been done. We are multiplying two numbers. No idea from anyone. So what's the question? Sorry about it. Sorry, just just repeat it. What is the question? But we don't have any idea about it. What is the question? You are not aware about it. Straight away it is written. You have to multiply under root minus 8 into under root minus 8. I yeah. just want to know <clears throat> what will you do? So first we are uh, taking i. Uh, i squared is minus 1. So when you are just taking minus from the root, so you are squaring that and just i will be left. Same into the next part of minus 8. Then we are taking, uh, uh, we are taking 8 from the root. It will be by the power of 2. So the root will cancel with 2. And uh, only 8 will be remaining. And I will also square. Because when we are taking 8 from the root, then I also, we are getting square of 8. So I square is minus 1. Minus 1 into 8 is minus 8. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. I have a question. Can I ask? Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, sir. Uh, if the roots are of the same degree, we can multiply the numbers under the root, okay? And we can multiply minus 8 by minus 8 and it will become a plus 64. And the 64 uh, root is 8, not minus 8. eight. Yes. Minus 8, okay. But why okay. this is minus 8? Uh, I tell you, in any condition, we cannot multiply an under root with minus sign. That is not a number, that is a complex part, imaginary part of a number. Till now, we were always aware of that numbers are positive and their square roots can be taken for positive numbers. But now, I'm just letting you know that it is minus. 8 under root. Minus so, 8 means minus 1 into 8. And minus 1 under root is iota and 8 is under root 8. 
So sorry for the interruption. Also, we can do like uh, as she is saying, uh, eight into eight is sixty-four, and uh, from minus i, uh, from minus sign, we are taking i square. So when we are just taking out sixty-eight from the root, then we are just lifting uh, the uh, eight will be left. So minus sign will be uh, minus uh, sign will be uh, multiplied to eight. So again, it will come minus eight. At the both no, no, no. both way no, we no. can solve it. And that is absolutely correct. But the madam says when we multiply two negative numbers, we get a positive number. Okay. And if we get a positive number, so why can't we write minus under root eight into minus under root eight as under root sixty four? No, sorry. This, in this case, we can't. We can't do that because this yeah. is an imaginary part of a number. It is yeah, not an imaginary count. It is not minus one into eight. We have, for the simplification, we have made it minus one into eight. It is actually under root of minus eight. To so take it iota common because i square is minus one. This is what I showed you. This one, i square is minus one. This is minus one. Minus one under root is iota. You have to remember it. We cannot solve that in quadratic equation. There we write it. We can't. This can be. This can't be solved. But here, we have to convert it into a complex number and solve it. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, in a quadratic equation, we are, we have minus sign under the root, and we are taking that in the imaginary part, which is i. Ah, this this now we will be showing it to you. Under root minus fifty six upon under root eight. Now see to the it what I what I have done. I have removed minus one as iota, and rest I have brought everything under a single under root. If minus 56 would have been as 56 only, so I would have written under root 7. Now it is since it is minus 56, so I will be writing this. The answer is i under root 7. That is the difference. Now, we will be adding two complex numbers. Complex number is in the form of a plus ib. Second number will be c plus id. So what we will be doing? We will be adding real part to the real part and complex part to the complex part or the imaginary part to the imaginary part. You can see a will be added to c and b will be added to d. In the second case, when we are subtracting, so A will be subtracted, C will be subtracted from A, and D will be subtracted from B. This is the standard form how addition and subtraction of complex number system. You can see to it. If we are talking about the addition, we have a complex number 4 minus 6 iota. And the second number is minus 3 plus 7 iota. We have been asked to add them. So straight away we will be adding real part to the real part. Four plus minus three is four minus three. Okay, and we will be adding the imaginary part. This is minus six plus seven, which will be equal to one. So it will be one plus iota. Okay. And as far as your subtraction is concerned, again the same thing will be done. Real part will be subtracted from the real part and imaginary part will be subtracted from the imaginary part. 10 minus 5, straight away the question is 10 minus 4 iota minus 5 minus 2 iota. Be careful that you are subtracting. So signs will change. Straight away I am showing you how, how I did that. 10 minus 5 is 5. 
minus 4 and plus 2. Minus 4 plus 2 will be minus 2. That means your answer will be 5 minus 2 iota. Is that clear? Yes. The solution sir. is in front of you. Yes, sir. It was clear. Okay. Okay. Now, I will be stopping over here because I want that you should go through some part of the complex number because in the next session, tedious work will be taught to you. Multiplication, division, conjugate, amplitude, in the polar form, this all will be taught to you. De Mauer theorem, cube root of unity, this all comes under complex number. Okay. Okay, any sir. Any questions from okay, sir. any questions from anyone? Do you have any question? No, sir. Okay. So can we conclude today's session over here? Okay. Bye-bye. See you on Saturday. Goodbye, Bye -bye. sir. Have a nice week. Thank you.